You're listening to Thunder Quack Podcast Network. This is the Thunder Quack Podcast. The official podcast of Thunder Quack Podcast Network. Where anything can happen. So strap yourselves in and hold on to your butts. It's Thunderquack time! Hello and welcome back to the Thunderquack podcast, the official podcast of Thunderquack.com, which you can get early every Tuesday over at Patreon.com slash Thunderquack, or you can wait and get it late every Friday on podcast services across the galaxy. Uh, I am one of your hosts, Michael Conlon. And I'm your other host, Amanda Conkin. Uh, and I, I, right up front, will tell you that, that uh, we're uh, supported by Patreon. Uh, and uh, I, as we talk about, you know, uh, you get early at patreon.com slash thunderquack, like, uh, like many of our Patreon supporters do. Uh, but we got to give the shout out to our Patreon producers, mm-hmm. uh, Brian Murowski and JJ Samuel. Um, see, because if I don't do it at the beginning, then I'm going to forget at the middle and then do it at the very end when nobody's actually listening anymore. So, um, I don't know. We got, we got to figure out a better flow for that, but, uh, uh, but we're, we're playing with the format right now. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I'm trying to find like the, you know, like structure, but not too much. Like I don't want it to feel like we just do the same thing every episode, but uh, but but the thing is, is that we end up kind of doing the same thing every episode, which is we talk about a little bit of news, we talk about stuff that we watched, and then we talk about a big thing. So I'm just <laughs> kind of putting labels on those, um, but uh, but we're playing with it right now. Um, so with that, we don't. Uh, it's not like I don't, it's weird that they with them being segments. I don't. Because then it needs like an intro of like a news, right? But that's not that's not us. Uh, that's not this podcast, at least. That works over on on the Star Wars ones. Because um, what we do is like um, uh, Martin just makes a little clip with like six Star Wars quotes and music in behind it, and then everybody thinks it's the greatest thing ever because it is. Uh, <laughs> but that's not going to work for us. You could um, just do every yeah. time you want to transition. From- I Disney World. <laughs> Whoa, boy, what a gong show! Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's this global pandemic that's happening right now. We've talked about it a couple of times on the podcast. I think <laughs> I Florida doesn't seem to have gotten the memo. Maybe, maybe the maybe Thunderquack isn't available in Florida. I don't know. I, I haven't asked, um, <laughs> but I they they decided in the midst of record breaking. Although it's like I don't like the record was set like the previous day before it. It's like yeah. every day is a record breaking day because it just keeps getting worse and worse down there. Um, but they had a record breaking day uh, for new cases of COVID-19 in the state of Florida the day that they reopened Disney world. And yet people just flocked to it. And it just, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this other than like, like seriously, like, are you people kidding me? Is a theme park that important? There's a reason why, the whole like controversy right now about like should you or shouldn't you enforce these things and it's like because people can't make their own decisions i uh have only vaguely heard about this i'm literally googling it as we are chatting yeah to to see like the full brunt of it and i just i love the global news coverage which is like a canadian um news coverage that uh has the the headline scariest place on earth <laughs> disney world mocked for opening of advent uh, virus spike but sorry it's just i just find that funny um and kind of like yeah i mean people are people people want to people want to get out of their house and do stuff i mean it doesn't surprise me that's the weird thing about this mike and and i just i've just had a very interesting 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna de like hard detour into some like personal anecdotes in the middle of this news story, but it was a thing where I did my first like official like I went out into the world yesterday, in the first time for like my back has my back um went out like a couple weeks ago. And it hasn't fully recovered yet at all. So I, I, I just like had been needing to go for a massage and rightly so there's a lot of places that are closed and I can't deal with chiropractors because they just hurt. Like I am just, so I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to go for a massage. And then my friend had reached out and was like, Hey, do you want to like drive with me to Whistler and go to this place? Um, like, uh, to like, to get your massage. And I'm like, Oh my God, I totally could do that. And so I did, I went, I went to a place with lots of people. Well, I mean, not lots of people, obviously it was social distance and all that stuff to go get my massage. And then I went in a hot tub and there was other people there, but they were like far away. And it was, it was, it was really good. I'm actually like really impressed with like how social distanced they were able to keep stuff, but I'm kind of like freaked out where I'm like, oh my God, there's all these people. But the, the friend that I was with is kind of like, no, this is just what the world is like. Like, people are out and about and doing whatever they want. And I'm kind of like, not my people. Like, some people are doing this, but I don't think my people are doing this. And then I realized, like, when we were driving back, we were, like, driving down through downtown Vancouver on a Sunday night. And everybody was just, like, out walking around at the beach. There was nobody wearing masks. So this doesn't surprise me. Like, we talk about Florida as if it's, like, you know, Florida because it's Florida and it's easy to make fun of. But, like, Vancouver's not much better. Okay, but the big difference there is that yesterday we reported no new cases in British Columbia. I mean, yes, that's true. Zero new that's, cases. Yeah. We have 187 confirmed cases the last time I checked earlier today. Yeah. So, in the entire province. I mean, it's very right? it's very true. I will say that that is like the big the big difference. So, yeah. so we are we are in phase 3 of yeah. of uh, like the the return to to normalcy and I don't I, I don't think that we're going to see phase four that soon. I think that I mean, we're yeah. going to see schools opening back up and, and, um, and I, I imagine what is going to happen is that we're going to see schools open back up, um, along with a few other places. And then we are very quickly going to see a second wave and then everything shut down again. But, right. um, that said, it, like we, we are in a very good position to deal with, with uh cases whereas yeah, florida yeah. is is hopelessly overwhelmed as is california as is like everywhere uh it, it's 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 actually quite bad <laughs> down there wow. and it's not so much about about the numbers like the confirmed cases um as it is about the capacity to deal with the cases the number of active cases right that said i uh, florida as a state has more than double the confirmed cases uh as the entirety of canada the whole country Jeez, yeah. um and so that like that really tells you like that i think that paints a a, a, a clear enough picture of what of the how sparse is. the Canadian population is? No, well, okay. That, <laughs> I mean, like that definitely helps. That definitely helps. But, but the majority of our of our population is in our our metropolitan centers. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like like it, it is just as dangerous uh, uh, a situation, or it could the the potential for danger is just as as bad in Vancouver or Toronto. Um, or Montreal as it as it would be in in a lot of the that's insane cities. fifteen thousand three hundred yeah. new cases yeah like that is just a like like a like that's a like that's an insane number it's 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 difficult to that's... grasp and I think that that's one of the biggest problems oh, wow. with the whole thing is that is that it is very difficult to grasp the reality of some of these numbers because what does one hundred eighty seven people in British Columbia mean and when it's like well there's there are cases in the interior. There are cases in the lower mainland. There are cases on the island that are all isolated, right? Yeah. Like, like the cases on the island don't affect us in in Metro Vancouver th that directly. They can because someone could go over and come back and all that sort of thing. But, but it is there is a natural barrier there, right? A geographic right. barrier there. Yeah. Um. So it is a little bit more spread out across the province. So it's actually like it's not as much of a threat as as um, as it is in other places. But all you got to do is is hop across the border to Washington State, and it's 
like there's a map that's been going around that's like a heat map of of uh, the yeah, infections like a, yeah and you can see that there's a few red spots on on the map in canada in in like generally around uh around major cities um vancouver is actually like barely registered on that map because we're actually doing really well in metro vancouver but then the the at the 49th parallel it's just like it just turns red Jeez, like this yeah. this heat map just turns red because it's just with the exception of a little bit of the the midwest um where again people are much more spread out it's much more yeah. more uh, uh, much less rural. densely yeah. populated more rural um other than that it's like like the whole east coast is just one big red sea of infections and yeah. uh, and and like that's like that's just the reality of it it's they the the country's not dealing with it and um it's up to in a lot of cases local municipal governments to to handle it and they're not equipped and uh, they don't have plans so it's just we are so lucky in bc we are so lucky to have yeah. uh, uh dr bonnie henry to 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 basically lead us through this um one of the things that's really interesting is that like our our premier which is like i guess to 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 an american that would be like a governor um with way less power yeah, way less power way less power <laughs> uh, john horgan is like is like not in the news right now like, yeah like, he's not yeah we really haven't heard from him very much because because what does he know about it he he's letting bonnie henry do what her what her yeah. do her job yeah but but she's on the news like every day right yeah. so yeah. um I, they've I mean, really like, like they've really i think that there's that's the big thing in canada is that we've really let um like the science speak and one of the things that i find interesting is even people like at our work, we're trying to find places where we're like, okay, the the government people have said that it's okay. Like Bonnie Henry has said, like small gatherings, opening your circle a little bit is okay. Like it's okay to meet in small groups with different people. And so my work is trying to find ways for us to reconnect with one another. And some of the shows are doing like small things where they're like, okay, well, we have a new artist starting. Let's actually like, let's like myself and the supervisor, like take them out for lunch or something. And so we on our show, we're kind of like, okay, well, let's see if people want to do that on our show. And it was like a 50 50 divide man there are like people on our show being like nope not gonna leave my house don't want to deal like because people are listening to it mm -hmm. right like people are being like i don't want to go outside i want to so i want to social distance and i want to make sure that i'm being safe until they're like opening it up and telling us that it's okay and that's in bc where like the numbers are pretty good yeah. and i mean granted you go to the interior and my sister doesn't care where she goes but like you know it's, I feel like it's okay. And part of that is just because of the discourse that's happening in, in Canada that's different. A little bit. Yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, and, and, like, New Zealand has declared themselves, like, they're completely COVID-free, right? Um, so Because awesome. of the way that they've handled it. So, yeah. it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it, the, the whole point of this being that, uh, personally, I think it's very irresponsible for Disney as a corporation to open the park. Um, I understand that they have financial burdens that, that they're worried about. Um, and I know that there are probably a lot of cast members who want to get back to work because they're again, like, it's again, it's much more difficult down there than it is here. We have our wage subsidy. That's the, the, the Canadian emergency relief benefit that is, um, is helping a lot of people. Um, uh, but down there they get, they get, they got like a check or something i don't know like they, they they and and it's not actually like it's a stimulus check it's not right. even like the purpose of it isn't hey as the government we're going to help you through this the the purpose is we don't want the economy to collapse so here's some money go spend it right right which is very different because it's not about the people it's about the economy right um and that you know it, like that's that's where america's at right now um and we're not that much better but we are a little bit better uh, yeah. uh we have socialized medicine so that just by default that that makes it a little bit better up here um along with a lot of the other stuff the other social programs that we have but um yeah i mean like it's just it's it's america to me at the at the at this moment especially with with trump 
uh, in the White House is uh, it's a country uh, uh, of and for corporations. Um, and the it's like it's like the Matrix, like the people don't realize that they're all just plugged in batteries. Uh, that the economy runs off of like it's 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 actually like to me it's very sad that that that's the the state that it's in right now where there's a lot of people uh that are really hurting and and they have a federal government that does not care and state governments that do not care and local governments that do not care um because they're more interested in in keeping corporations and businesses happy right so uh, that uh, yeah, we'll talk a lot more about America when we get into our main topic. Uh, but uh, we're we're going to talk about Hamilton. But um, yeah, it, the, one America of the most terrific. telling things. There's a tweet that's going around that uh, is basically the fact that uh, Disney is opening Disney World, but not their corporate offices. Oh, tells yeah. you everything you need to know about how the company is being run. And I love Disney. I, I, I love what they produce. And I think that there are a lot of really dedicated, really um, good people at that company. I think that the board of directors and shareholders and the, 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 the people who make these decisions on, on the business side of it, I think, are much more concerned with dollars than they are with human lives. Um, but I mean, like, that's not I don't think that that's surprising to anybody. Is that I mean, surprising to you? No. I mean, <laughs> no. like, and it's, there's this whole, I don't, I don't even know. Let's, let, let's talk about the next news topic. We're going to be talking so much about America yeah. later. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Disney wanting all of our money, uh, they announced a new Star Wars series today. Uh, <laughs> and it is a very transparent attempt at keeping a very certain vocal subset of the fandom happy. Uh, it's uh, Star Wars The Bad Batch. The Bad Batch are um, they're a, a team of clone troopers. Uh, they all have um, oh, how do they describe it? They're like they're like beneficial defects or something like that. They're all defective clones. Uh, desirable. Desirable defects, I uh, think is what they call them. Um, that makes sense where each one of them is a little bit off. Um, but, but it means that they can be more specialized than the regular clone troopers were. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're this like special commando group of clone troopers. There was a whole arc about them in the final season. Oh yeah. Cause I was kind of like, I, when I Google this, I feel like it's like a star Wars clone wars episode, but it's cause it was at some it point was. in time. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And this is basically a spinoff. They got, right. they've gotten their own series. And that's why I say like this show is a very transparent attempt to keep a very specific subset of fans happy. Um, it is the same subset of fans that were pandered to with the rise of Skywalker. So it's it, this is very much about making sure that the um, uh, fragile male egos are mm -hmm. fed with explosions and uh, and and uh, Star Wars is for boys. Right. I mean, um, isn't that who rappers. Star Wars is made for, anyways? I don't know what the rest of us are doing here, even. So. Well, I mean, it's it's not because Star Wars Rebels is for anybody. Um, okay. The Clone Wars is actually. Uh, um, a much more complex show than than um, a lot of people would have you believe, and the main character is a is a teenage girl. So, I mean, um, yes, I was being sarcastic. But but it, it, there is a bit of a there is a bit of a of a pattern developing that's a bit upsetting um, of of them. I, the, the the term Trojan horse is being used for for these shows like the Mandalorian was a Trojan horse where it was it was very much marketed and sold to the fans as a Boba Fett TV series oh right and that wasn't not <laughs> what it is it's <laughs> no, actually a, it's actually a show about being a good dad but <laughs> um which which is which is a really sneaky way of getting some some uh, mythic storytelling 
into uh, a, a, an action series. But I, I, I think after the way that the Last Jedi was discussed, um, and then and then the way that Solo performed at the box office, that Disney got very scared as a corporation and was like, "We gotta, we gotta make sure that we're that we're marketing this stuff right." And so, uh, the Mandalorian was was played off as uh, until it premiered, everybody thought that it was going to be an action series, like that it was just basically it. A lot of people were saying the Game of Thrones of Star Wars, right? That's what everybody was saying. Oh, this is going to be like Game of Thrones, but Star Wars. And it is not. It's nothing like Game of Thrones. It's <laughs> so much better and more engaging than Game of Thrones ever was. But, um, and it's like, it doesn't have like that hard edge or any of that stuff. Um, and then Rise of Skywalker was its own thing. Uh, but but then with, with with Bad Batch, it feels a lot like... There's no way that the series is just about five clone troopers. <laughs> it's just, there's just no way that that's what the whole series is about. Um, the description of it is that they're, uh, that, you know, after the, the, the rise of the empire, they're like, a, they operate as a mercenary unit going around, uh, working for different people, I guess. I, uh, it, it, Yes, there will be some some story stuff about like how the clones deal with essentially being decommissioned after the Clone Wars ended, um, and and I think that that'll be a thematic thing throughout the series, or at least throughout the first season. Does decommissioned but, mean killed? I no, they they okay. weren't they weren't like like murdered afterwards. Like okay. they were just they were put into different roles because it wasn't a war anymore, so they didn't need right. soldiers; they needed cops. Right. right so uh and they actually a, a lot of the clones died or were at the end of their life cycles because they have accelerated life cycles right they 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 age at twice the rate so by the end of the clone wars a lot of them were were getting up in years sort of thing um and not not at prime you know soldier uh ages like so in capacity yeah yeah, so they started conscripting and stuff like that. And I think that that'll definitely be a part of the show is like explaining that world building aspect of it. But I also think that there's there has to be more to this show than what they've told us today. It was just announced this morning, so there's there's not really a lot else to go on. But there are rumors that Ahsoka and Captain Rex will be in the series um and and that we might see some other familiar faces as well. Um, but I, there's no way that there's not a, a, a quirky droid, um, if not more than one quirky droid, that joins their team. Um, and I'm calling it right now. There's either a kid, uh, or, or a, or a woman that that is part of their, their. Uh, well, because otherwise they're missing like a main demographic. Yeah. I, I might have, but what about a child woman? Well, that's child, so child, my expectation. Child. There you go. There there are there are four boxes that the clones don't check that you need to have a Star Wars show. So like a Star Wars property, like a like a like a crew and you got to have you got to have a token girl. Um it's nice to have a kid. Uh, uh you have to have a droid like I said and and you got to have an alien. So they'll have a droid that's without saying there's no way that they don't have a droid um i anticipate that they will have a a an alien teenage girl that's oh, part of that's a good idea yeah that's a good idea um that which will then like check, check all their of alien the boxes, boxes. yeah <laughs> um, uh, all at once so we'll have like six main characters basically we'll we'll have the five of them uh, droids never really count as main characters they're they're supporting um but yeah like it it, i just don't know how interested i am at the moment at the prospect of a show that is five clone troopers no matter like they're all different they have different personalities but i didn't really like the the bad batch arc that much um it 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 was kind of flat for me like the stuff with rex and anakin in it was good but but the stuff with the clones themselves like with the bad batch clones themselves didn't really do it for me uh like they're they're kind of bad 
uh, I said this on on Rebel Cells. They're bad cardboard cutouts of action tropes. Um, like they're very two dimensional. They're but obviously if they are the main characters of their own series, that'll that'll change, right? They'll they'll need to be more fleshed out. Um, in order for the show to have any legs, but we'll see. We'll see. We really don't know a lot about it yet. It's 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 very early, but um, uh, I expect that we'll probably get some more news around uh, the the middle to late August, um, beginning of September at the absolute latest. Uh, and I say that because I think that this w- announcement was actually supposed to be at Comic Con, um, oh, yeah. and we're getting it a couple weeks early because Comic Con's not really happening. Um, and then Star Wars Celebration was supposed to happen in late August. So we would have it definitely got gotten a trailer. I was going to go there. this year. I was yeah. going to go, and now I'm not going to go. So therefore, they had to cancel it. Yeah. It's all your fault. Yeah, the, basically. the global pandemic and uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of deaths are on your head, Amanda, <laughs> because you wanted to go to Star Wars Celebration in Disneyland. <laughs> basically. Sometimes doing it, I don't know. Sometimes, like, does do other people feel that way? And then Absolutely. That's why you're, like, hyper people paranoid feel that way things. all the time. My point in saying that is that it is always such a ridiculously egocentric statement <laughs> that the universe cares so much about you and your uh, displeasure that it would craft a global <laughs> pandemic in order to stop you from going to a thing. But you're all just figments of my imagination. Exactly. So therefore, clearly. Yeah. By the way, I just have to go back to this Disneyland thing because in researching one of the best like Twitter reactions ever to the Disneyland thing is a gif of um, Peter Pan's like hitting Tinkerbell to get all the dust off and it's like Disney World giving everyone coronavirus like and then it's like the gif of the Tinkerbell with the <laughs> So it's a very good like visual joke that is hard to describe via podcast, but it's gold. We'll take your word for it. <laughs> okay, good. It's so funny. I uh, <laughs> let's switch over from Wars to Trek and talk about another animated series. This was announced a little while ago, but we just got the uh, the first uh, full trailer for Star Trek Lower Decks, which is a Star Trek series about the other people. On the ship, <laughs> not the bridge crew, not the main characters, not the not the super heroic uh, or uh, uh, focal point characters, but the people that just make the ship run. Which I love this idea. Yeah, like it's the best idea, and it's an idea that like me and the girls that made that um the animated film, we like had an idea where we're like, why don't we make a movie about the people that nobody cares about on the ship, like the garbage people or the like whatever, right? Like. There's so many people that need to make a ship function like that. And it's like, I don't know. It's a very yeah. funny trailer. But we were talking about this that, like, I think I like it because I have no, like, preconceived notions of what Star Trek should you be. You have no allegiance to Star Trek. Exactly. So it's not betraying anything. It's, no. It's not. There are a lot of people uh, online because it's something. So they're mad about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> surprisingly, the internet got mad about a thing. Uh, Weird. Yeah. Totally odd. Um I, it's silliness. It's pure silliness, and they're all going to watch it anyways. But uh, I think it looks fantastic, and I'm a huge Star Trek nerd. So, um, yeah. I. But I will say that, like, I still haven't finished Picard, which, which if you will recall, I was very excited for. Yeah. I'm, like, five episodes into that season. It has not grabbed me Uh um i just i don't know what it's supposed to be about like it just like i understand the plot i don't understand why right right because money man um it's just it's such a weird confused show this star trek lower decks knows exactly what it's doing knows exactly what it wants to be um and uh and that to me is very exciting um and i uh, i it's very upsetting for seth mcfarlane i'm sure because he pitched uh, a a a comedy star trek series to cbs a long time ago they said no he took it back to fox fox turned it into the orville right to you and then i don't 
I don't know if the Orville was still on before the pandemic happened, but I'm sure it's going to get canceled if it was on, if it was still on. I don't know anybody who cares about it or watches it. But weirdly, regularly. it got a couple seasons, didn't it? It has it, like three seasons, did. something like that. I think it has at least two. Yeah. Um, but this, I mean, like this, this series is not that far off from what he wanted to do. And I think that that's very interesting that they, and like, when you look at it, the style of it is, is almost family guy esque. Um, and, and that's all kind of, I don't know. I, I'd be cheesed off. I'd be a little bit cheesed if I were (laughs) Seth MacFarlane, but, um, I don't remember if Seth MacFarlane's been canceled by society yet or not because I think that maybe he was a jerk or something. Um, For but some I could reason, be like about you're stuff. no, you're yeah, you're you're like there's something like prickling at the edges of my like like scope that I'm kind of like I feel like I don't like him for a reason that I can't quite remember. Yeah. And it could just be it could just be my own predisposition to not like him, <laughs> but like. Uh, anyways, like, no, it's so still, like I yeah. like early Family Guy stuff. I really enjoyed. And then I, uh, I, uh, the the Ted movies, um, both of them I think are very funny, but very stupid films. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. There's a, there's a, there's certainly something juvenile about his humor that, that maybe that's just all it is. Because I don't just, think it's not for I don't. Everybody. I just think he's just kind of odd. Like I just <laughs> I don't I don't know. <laughs> Um, I think the Orville, by the way, did get renewed for a third, it, yeah, it, a third it does season. Have a season yeah. Three. Um, yeah, yeah, but uh, I, yeah, I mean, like, I, I don't know. I think this series looks great. I think that it's playing with the concept. I love the uniforms, uh, which is always to me one of the most important things with a Star Trek series. Whenever it's like, oh, new Star Trek series, I'm like, cool. I need to see the uniforms first <laughs> before yeah. I can get invested in it. Um, it's one of the things that I actually hate the most about. Um, about discovery because <gasps> discovery they're is so in, good no discovery is in the the original series era and yet they dress like a generic sci-fi garbage show but um, they have the like isn't it like really intricate design i remember people like talking about the star trek d- discovery designs. okay well it shouldn't be intricate they should be it should be bold shapes and colors okay, uh, well. that is how you do a star trek uniform <laughs> And I, I, the, like the, there's a spinoff from Discovery, uh, that is, oh, what's it called? Strange New Worlds, I think, is what it's called. Oh yeah, um, yeah. That is yeah. just about Pike and his crew, Pike, Spock, and, um, and uh, and Number One, I mm-hmm. uh, and the Enterprise, like the the Enterprise before Kirk. Um, oh yeah, and, and it's before both universes, right? Or is it after which universe is uh, it? It would it. It's different. It's different. Okay. It's not it's part different. of the Kelvin timeline. Discovery's okay. never been part of the Kelvin timeline. Yeah, but so that's what I mean, though. Like it happens technically before the Kelvin timeline split, right? Because no, no, mm-hmm. it's just its own universe. Uh, like yes and no, but it's you're but not it's, answering my question. <laughs> Discovery, Discovery is in the prime timeline. It doesn't matter if it's before or after the Kelvin. It's right. in the prime timeline. Yeah. So it it directly connects into the original series and then forward, next gen, Voyager, DS9, all of that stuff. Yeah. Whether or not it's split it's before or after the split is irrelevant to that show. Because it like Yes, but it's it's relevant to my brain and how I classify information. No, but I'm trying to tell you that that's not how you should be classifying Star Trek. But it, that's how I might that's how I do classify. The, the, the Kelvin timeline is just the movies. If it's not the movies, it's not the Kelvin timeline. It, it, it nothing that they've put out that's not other than a couple of comics, is 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 Kelvin timeline other than the three movies. And in fact, if I had to guess, the Kelvin timeline's toast. Well, uh, yeah, but I, because it's the one that I like, right? That it's the idea that I'm like, uh, what? No, w- once again, it has nothing to do with you, and it's because Anton Yelkin <laughs> tragically died. Well, I mean, yes, uh, obviously. No, I mean. I mean, because it's the one that I like, it's the yeah. thing that I have as a reference for everything else. So when I go into it and I split my brain into like, what story are we talking about? Mm-hmm. I use that as like a reference point. And so in my brain, I'm trying to think of when, when, uh, what's his face was born. What's his face? 
Kirk. Kirk. No. When, so when it, Kirk was born. Okay. So so here here's 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 where we're getting confused. It's yes, it is post Kelvin. Discovery is post Kelvin, right? Because, because the it's Enterprise like when it is, is the and it, but it's the Kelvin that like didn't have the thing that come back and create the Kelvin universe. Yes, it, I got but it. it's okay. the, it's the prime timeline. Like yes, prime timeline. I got yeah. it. I figured yeah. it out. Sorry, because because otherwise the Enterprise, me. the Enterprise isn't ready in the Kelvin timeline until right. the until the events of Star Trek, right. which that's not in the original prime timeline. The Enterprise was out there for years before Kirk became the captain. Like he wasn't the first captain of of the Enterprise. Although in the Kelvin timeline he's not either Pike is, but Pike's mm-hmm. captain for like 15 minutes before Spock is captain and then Kirk, right? Right. Um anyways, it's uh, irrelevant. Discovery is in the prime timeline, but um <laughs> I I feel like I've been put on this earth like, I feel like at, at yeah. one point in time, you're being punished a little bit in your life to have to podcast for nine years with someone who just knows just enough about nerdy culture to be able to, like, sustain conversations with you. Yeah. Just but enough doesn't to quite know, me. But just enough, yeah. just enough to drive you bananas, like, once a week. The, it, it, look, it, it's, it's, a, it's a point that comes up very often <laughs> uh, with Crystal and I. I it's... I still haven't been able to figure out why I would want two of you in my life Um, because it's very similar with Crystal where it's like she knows she knows enough about the the things that I care about in order to like listen to me talk about them but then it's like the second they they I'm like what do you think she's like I don't know (laughs) <laughs> and I'm like, okay, cool. So it's like watching Picard. It's like like we started watching it and she 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 humored it for a little bit before I was like, You're not paying attention to this show at all, are you? And she's like, No, no, not not even a little bit. Um Yeah, anyways, it's it's it yeah, the the attitudes are very similar. Um you're a little bit geekier than, than Crystal, but I uh, I uh, yeah. Why I why I would want to to have uh have to deal with this on multiple fronts <laughs> i don't know but it's it is the burden that i bear um it's part of what makes the show good though <laughs> yes, uh, yes. i guarantee it uh, <laughs> it's part of the it's it's the it's the alchemy of, <laughs> uh, i i i think i think that there's a, a joy for the listeners in hearing m- me a very stereotypical classic fanboy i uh, have to have to deal with it and go like look all right just understand what i'm talking about because i I don't know that that it's ever a good look for me but but also that people like listening are kind of get to also feel smarter about themselves and what they know they do they do but all but the other part of it is like like on twitter and and in the facebook group there's a lot of times where where several of our listeners are like hey amanda me too right so yeah. like i I do think that that is the that's the secret sauce <laughs> yeah, of the thunder go, quack podcast is that we are both high level and low level at the exact same time yeah. i there you go i like it <laughs> yeah. it works it's our blessing and our curse <laughs> i so star trek lower decks it looks like it's gonna be great i can't wait for it uh it starts next month um we're actually like we're heading into uh, Some great stuff. Yeah, like up. we got we've got cursed next week, which we talked about on the last episode. Yeah. Umbrella the, uh, Academy so soon. Yeah, we've got Umbrella Two. Academy the week after that, and then and mm-hmm. then pretty quick after that, we've got Lower Decks. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff coming. So oh, and apparently Warrior Nun is doing pretty well uh, on Netflix. And the reason I like that is because I think I know people that worked on it because I remember people posting about their like cool oh, yeah. little show. So um um because it's oh yeah no I think I think Warrior Nun is Simon Barry. Um, who is, I, it could be, I could be completely wrong about that. Or it's just, yeah, no, no, he's Simon Barry who did Continuum. And Continuum was very much like a Canadian thing. And like, I, I feel like the reason I noticed because I have like people who were like, hey, it's Simon's new show. Um, and it's actually like got one of the top Canadian rankings. Like, you know how they like are now doing the like one through 10. Um, yeah. it, it was like six or something, which I think is like a big deal. And I think that that's pretty cool. Um, I haven't watched it yet, but it looks super, like super random. And I think Netflix did a pretty good job of actually like advertising it. Also Lucifer's coming back too. 
So, anyways, Netflix got a lot of a lot of good stuff uh, coming up in the near future. Yes. Um, so, anyways. Cool. Sorry, that was my little. That was that was the other the other thing that is currently on. So, Warrior Nun premiered like last week, and we've got Cursed coming out this week, and then next week is um, Umbrella Academy too. But it's like cool, like awesome new sci-fi. I just think is interesting to have like. Like, stuff that's not... Like, I don't know, Warrior Nun looks so randomly weird. I think it's based off a comic? But probably. It, everything's sort of based off of something. Uh, I, yeah, well, obviously. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, well, it's, just the, it's just the era that we live in. Um, <laughs> why, what have you been watching? What have I been watching? Yeah. Shocking no one. I've been watching some more Korean drama. Yeah. Um... Uh, but actually something that I think is really, is really cool is that I've started to actually like be like, Hey, I watch so much of this. I should like learn more about it because I've got actors that show up in everything. And I'm like, I like this actor. I don't know what their name is because like, you don't see their names because their names are like in Korean when they show up on the screen. So like, I have to like actually like look up who they are. And Mm -hmm. I just recently found out that like, um, because I was reading, there's a new Netflix like Korean drama that keeps being advertised for me because it's starring Lee Min Ho and I I really like him. Um, he's fantastic. Um, it's called like The Eternal King or something like that. Um, but I was reading the Netflix description and it was like uh, the newest drama from famous uh, Korean like screenwriter Kim Eun Suk and I was like, who is this person? And I realized that she has written like all of my favorite dramas over the course of the last like 20 years she's written like all of the most like highest rated most popular dramas ever that i absolutely love starting with secret garden which i think i've talked about before and then descendants of the sun and um goblin the lonely and great god which is actually translated guardian the lonely and great god but i think it works better uh translated as goblin anyways but it's like really cool for me to be like hey this is all coming from the mind of one woman and um she's awesome and i should probably start paying more attention to like awesome ladies that are making cool things around the world you you said a lot of words there okay um yes. and and that's, I, it's good it's a positive thing it's good <laughs> and but none of it means anything to me and it all just sounds like gibberish like <laughs> the 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 titles for these shows are um and i understand there's a there's a translation factor there but uh uh it's a. Uh, it's interesting. There's, I don't know. Look, I, I, I'm probably about six months away okay. from, from, from digging into a, a, a Korean drama Dude. because of all of the, what I talked about last week with all of the the, uh, women in the Star Wars fandom that I'm right? that I'm following because yeah. yeah. it's it's coming up a lot. It turns out, <laughs> um, uh, the, this, there are some common threads like, I I the, the you would like a lot of these women that I yeah. that I've been following and interacting <laughs> with them. I think that you would get along with a lot of them. I'm very I'm very certain I would too. And yeah. I I've talked about the goblin one before with you because it doesn't tran like the word the the word goblin doesn't translate properly because it's basically okay. about an immortal. But they they use the term goblin and goblin bride and it's like I can't I can't figure out the lore like the Korean lore behind the word goblin. Yeah. Um, because it's like, it's, it's like, he's not like the, the word, when you use the word goblin, we have very different connotations for what that would mean. But like the, the thing that like, when you start watching it, you watch the first episode and you understand that there is no other word to describe what he is because it's not like anything that's in like our kind of lore that, that we would be familiar with. But like the greatest like conceit of this show is that it's like this 939 year old immortal with a sword in his chest that he needs to find the love of his life so that she can remove it and he can finally die living um, with a grim reaper. <laughs> and uh, they, uh, and he falls in love with a woman who can see ghosts who happens to also be the goblin bride. So it's just like, but it's like just this like great random story that the best part of it is these two like immortal dude bros that just like live together and are really awkward around humans and it's just really fun i don't know man there's something really great about the randomness of korean dramas and how like again i watch very specific kind of genre stuff so i get that not all korean dramas involve a supernatural bent to them but almost everyone that i really enjoy like secret garden is about a man and a woman who swap bodies like that's the premise but that doesn't happen until like the sixth episode so you just like watch this this like drama and that just happens to be one of the plot points in this like eight 20 episode series is that they like swap bodies like halfway through anyways it's just it's just like very I, I, anyways, 
But yes, I said a lot of words in a lot of different shows. The current show that I recently just watched um, was uh, Weightlifting Fairy Kim Bok Joo, I think is what it was. And uh, the, again, I, I, I've been watching, I've been going through kind of like the highest rated ones because I know that I enjoy those a little bit more. So that's the Weightlifting Fairy Kim Bok Joo is the whole title. That's the title of the drama, okay. yes. Um, so obviously uh, there's a portion of that that is, I'm going to guess it's like a, it's a, a proper noun. It's a, it's a name. Or Kim something. Bo- yeah, Kim, ba- Kim Bok Joo is the name, is her name. Yeah. Is, okay. Uh, but yeah. Weightlifting Fairy, I... <laughs> This is like there's a very. She's not an actual fairy. It's no, like a I term understand. of endearment. I understand. Obviously, okay, yeah. I like. I get it. I like. I like. I like. I think just based on that title, I can discern a little bit of 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 what it's about. But there's just like a there's a there's a weird literalism in in the metaphor. I think in in <laughs> the mean. Korean language, where where like titles are. Um, they're they're very good at describing what the show is <laughs> with the title but but to the english like to 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 someone who doesn't uh cuz i'm lucky that 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 i care about japanese stuff right so it's like right. it's yeah. it's not that far yeah. removed but it is different um but so i can understand a little bit because i do have that sort of cultural uh, uh halfway point i guess um, mm-hmm. but to somebody who doesn't have that to, 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 to the standard English ear, I think like they, a lot of people would be like, wait, what? Like, what did you just say? And I'm like removing the, the, the Korean name from that. Right. Like just talking yeah, about just the even weightlifting weight li- fairy. Part. Yeah. Yeah. But like, um, what was, what was one of the ones from, from last week that you talked about the, um, uh, my love from the star. Yeah. My love from the star, <laughs> which is like, it's, it's. My love from the stars f- is would be a like an English title. Right. It's still a little long for an English title, I think. But um, but my love from the star is like I don't know. There's just there's just these so little the literal, things in the translation yeah. that are that are very Korean. There is, and I had to I had to Google it. Like it's the literal translation is "You who came from the stars." Yeah. So like it it doesn't they like find a way to to translate it and some. And some stuff like you do, like that's one of the things that I really do love sometimes is finding out what it's actually called. And one of the things that like even with um, a pretty popular one, again, starring Lee Min Ho because he's fantastic. Um, well, actually, Boys Over Flowers was the first uh, one I ever watched. And it specifically like the title comes from a really popular term called like Flower Boys, which I didn't learn about until you watch the show and you understand what that is, because there is no translation for it. like you can't translate that like you have to understand what it actually is and it's one of the greatest things i think i'm going to get back to my like um uh title thing in a minute but like in korean dramas themselves i think i've talked about this how you have to i want to watch it i have to watch it with subtitles and with the actual korean because it's not, sometimes they don't translate things properly especially if it's like 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 names of like what you call people and how you address people because yeah. there's so much involved in like just changing because there's three different tenses in or not tenses um like like honorifics I guess it is like a like I feel like in Japanese there's probably honorifics too but yeah, like like are. that if you like literally just the way that you are speaking tells you about the relationship of the people and and that's not translatable like you can't so they they very specifically have to put in brackets like whoa what did you just say to me because they literally just say like hi my name's amanda but they say it with honorifics or they say it without honorifics and or they say it like in a in like that like they're talking down to you or they're like being rude and you literally don't know that unless you can understand that you didn't hear the right ending in yep. the word and so it's just like and and also just terminology as well like calling some there's this whole thing and i think i've talked about it before where the term opa is for like young like like women to call like older men that it's it's kind of like you have like older brothers would be called opa but like it's also like what you call men that you're attracted to or but you can also just use that term and so it's like a thing where like if you're if the like guy likes the girl and he calls and she calls someone else opa he's like opa i'm your opa you're not he's and so like you can't translate that <laughs> you have to use the word opa like you can't have a conversation like you the the like the like interaction doesn't work unless you understand the word itself 
And I had to I had to do a whole Googling because there's this one show that's called The Heirs. But sometimes it's called The Inheritors, depending on which, like, English translation you're, like, listening to. And I was like, I don't believe that this is actually called The Heirs. I feel like it's probably something about being a tribal or being, like, a, like a descendant of, like, really rich families. And then it turned out it's actually called The Heirs. Like, it's that's what it is but it was a thing where I was like I actually like doubted the like title because I was like it's probably called something different or means something different because sometimes the like it is like the titles are yeah and there's like to the beautiful you and you are beautiful are very famous Korean dramas and they're both very different <laughs> but hmm. anyways there's there's lots of but yeah sorry that's my that's the end of my rant about titles about Korean dramas <laughs> oh good but it's, it makes me really happy that it... And I don't know that much. Like, I don't watch a ton of anime. But I feel like there's probably similar things in how anime is translated. And how sometimes you can just find, like... Like, Senpai, I think, doesn't translate properly. Right? Yeah, no. As I it, mean, like, right? yeah. Sen- senpai... And, like, like you you can translate Senpai, but you have to explain it. Yeah, exactly. By translating it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so... Because, yeah. For yeah. Senpai is, like, a... It is, it is an honorific, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's, like, like, calling somebody Senpai is, like is saying like i'm uh like i worship that person right so like the the phrase that is uh the meme is senpai noticed me which is a very anime thing of like uh the person that you are looking up to sometimes it can be a romantic thing but it's usually it's usually like a platonic thing of like uh, oh my god like like the captain of the whatever sports team Right, would right, be a, yeah. would be senpai if you're if you're on the same sports team, and it's like oh you got a goal, and then senpai like looked at you and gave you one of those anime winks. Um, and <laughs> I you're can like, hear it as you described it. Yeah. I was like I can hear the like ding. Yeah, and 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 then and then the main character would like would like partially melt and be like oh senpai noticed me. Right. Um, so yeah, like that is it's a very like, um, it's a it's a Japanese term but the the meaning is universal like it's not it's not that we don't have the same ideology in our culture we just wouldn't really have a word for it right? well a specific word and that's which is which is really cool and something that i think is kind of interesting about korean culture in how elders are like really respected because it's built into the language like you have like older like older women like if there's a younger guy and an older girl like like even just like the difference of a year or whatever or like your older sister like you call them nuna and if you're a girl and there's like an older girl you call her uni i'm bastardizing these um pronunciations by the way because i mostly just read them (laughs) um but um but like it's because you use terminology and when i was when i was learning korean like they that's the first thing you do you say your name and then you say your age that's the second thing that you tell somebody because it matters because it it de- it determines the rest of the conversation because the moment you find out that you're older or younger than somebody you have to change how you talk to them and it's like built it's built into the language like it literally like my my korean teacher would like obviously that's like the the first lesson on the first day is introduce yourself, say how old you are. And then from then on, you have to use the right pronunciation and like terminology in class. You can't use language that's outside of that, um, like relationship dynamic. Hmm. So it's, I don't know. It's pretty cool. But it's also like, you can't, you can't extradite it from the language. Like you can't, it's impossible for you to just be like, well, why doesn't everybody just use this version? And it's like, well, you just, you just can't like, it doesn't work. (laughs) I mean, you probably could, but it would, you know, a radical seismic shift in the, in the substance of like the earth. I don't know. Or something. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know what you mean by that, but sure. I'll take your word for it. Uh, Uh, Basically, I mean, you can change absolutely anything you want in this world, but you just, you can't really at the same time. So, you know. (laughs) Um, What's the other thing you've been watching? Oh, uh, I actually watched it very specifically today so that I had a second thing to say besides just <laughs> Korean dramas. Um, I started watching The Babysitter's Club, so I got through two episodes of that. Although I actually almost got through two episodes of that. It got really awkward near the end of the second episode because I knew something bad was going to happen. Like, it's one of those things where it's like little kids where you're like, you know what's going to happen. Like, she lied about her the mark on her test and she has to go show it to her parents. And you're like, no, you lied about it. <laughs> So I, like, stopped watching because that, like, got really awkward for me. The worst part about it, though, is that the the character that plays the mom uh, for one of the, um, one of the girls, like, Cla- Claudia, uh, who is the, um, 
one of, like the she's basically like the second episode is is basically about Claudia. It's called like Claudia and the something something. Anyways, um, is Diana Bang who was in Entanglement. And I feel like I've talked about her before. She's like a Canadian actress, but she's like young and she's playing this mom and i'm kind of like what is diana bang doing in a mom role so it's anyways it's kind of cool to see her her doing that but also like she also plays teenage she also plays teenagers like in multiple things um yes but it was but it's very cool and the thing actually the most awkward thing about the babysitters club is that the kids are really good and the adult characters seem to be caricatures like the Claudia's older sister is very is like very much a character that she is playing. It's very interesting to see this young actress playing off of this like older actress, and the older actress is kind of like just this like sort of like that's part of her character is to be kind of removed and stuff. But like the young actress is like giving it her all, and you totally leave her. And anyways, it's yeah. so well cast. Um, and if you have any nostalgia whatsoever for the original Babysitters Club, I think it's totally worth it. But also if you don't, I think you'll I think it's just like a cute. Like, I think they did a pretty good job. And it's only, like, they're, like, less than half hour each, right? Like, they're little, like, 26 minutes or 25-minute episodes. So, cool. um, worth giving it a shot for sure, I think. Um, do you think Kara would like it? I do, actually. Well, yeah. I mean, it might be a little old because the kid, but the, but it's, like, th- it's, they're, like, 13, right? Yeah, but that's sort of aspirational, right? I guess so. So, I, I yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe we'll give it a try on the weekend. It definitely is, though, about kids. Like, that's yeah. kind of the cool, like, that's kind of the coolest part about it. And they're finding really interesting ways to be able to use the tropes from the story that originated in the 90s by changing how the technology, like, how they, how they react to the technology. Like, there's a storyline where one of the girls is grounded and her phone gets taken away. So that's why they have to use the, like, flashlight through the window, like communication yeah. style that they used to so it's kind of cool that they're able to find ways and also like the impetus for like how the babysitters club exists in a world where there's like the internet like it 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 works like i, fi- I find that they actually like didn't shy away from leaning into like how would this exist in in like our modern society and the way that kids actually react and use technology um of today so it's pretty cool cool yeah um Cool. Well, I mean, I've I've been continuing through Escaflone. That's been kind of my main focus right now. Yes. Um, Crystal and I are watching season two of Dead to Me, but um, we haven't gotten very far because because uh, we had to we had to carve out a chunk of time to watch Hamilton. Um, you said that so night, sadly, which was very difficult to manage, but but we did it. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear, but it's late at night. Cassie is still not in bed. Poor Cassie, and she seems upset. Um, but, uh, over the weekend, uh, the last Jedi was trending randomly just for no reason. I, I, it's one of those things where sometimes it like starts trending because of like a tweet and then, you know, people start retweeting it or conversation starts around it or something. And then it becomes that the last Jedi is trending and then it becomes trending because it's trending. <laughs> like, have you ever noticed that online where it's like... Some like stuff just trends because it trends where people are like asking, like, why is this trending? And it then snowballs, it to the trends. right? Yeah, it, yeah. Like, like it, it shows up, like, on the top 50 and everybody's like, oh, it's trending in the top 50. And then the conversation about the fact that it's trending gets people talking about it. And then all of a sudden it's in the top 10. <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay. So, um, yeah, on Sunday... Uh, yesterday, I guess I I started watching the Last Jedi with Cassie when it was just me and her. And she, is she really loud? Can you hear her? I can. Yeah. yeah. Poor um, little girl. Sorry. I I apologize to anybody who might be triggered by the sound of a crying baby. Um, normally we aim to record after the girls are in bed, but uh, I mean it's pretty late. I feel like she she late. should she should she be in should bed. be in bed. Yes. But I I I don't know what's going on out there. But um, Cassie and I started watching The Last Jedi by ourselves while Crystal and Kara were out. And uh, eventually they got home and ruined it. And uh, <laughs> I just, just... Is that the little distracted. picture where Cassie's like looking yeah. at Poe Dameron and you're like, yeah. me too, Cassie? Aww. There are more because um, I actually ended up live tweeting the whole time that I was watching it. So <laughs> nice. there's a whole thread. Uh, if you go into my Twitter, at ArkWolf, A-R-K-W-U-L-F. And uh, and check that out. It's like I I I tweeted the whole movie. So nice. Um, there are more pictures of Cassie 
uh, enjoying various moments of the movie. Um, but uh, yeah, she she for some reason every time my uh, uh, Holdo was making a speech, she would like stop what she was doing and Ooh. listen to Laura Dern, which I thought was really interesting. Great like, female role look. models. I yeah. love it. Um, I but yeah, I I that movie's flawless. I think I've said a couple of times recently on different podcasts of like, oh, you know, it's got problems like the. The Canto Bite yeah. stuff is a little, yeah. whatever. I watch it again, and I'm like, no, nope. perfect. No, nope. this movie is perfect. Like, in fact, I I really feel like that stuff on Canto Bite is aging really well. Interesting. Like it 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 was maybe a little bit a little bit wonky the first time I saw the movie, and I was like, okay, this is going on a little bit long. But um, but yeah, watching it, watching it yesterday. And I don't know if maybe the context has changed a little bit with what's going on in the world right now, and maybe that's a part of it, but it just, there was a point where I think everybody looked at it and went like, yeah, Rose's dialogue is a little on the nose. It's a little, it's a, it's a little pointed, um, and, and, and overly dramatic. Um, and I do think that, that what is happening right now and the stuff that we've been talking about the last few weeks, last, last couple months, um, it has pointed out to me at least that sometimes our language has to be a little bit dramatic in order for people to understand how serious it is. And, and I think that that's where she's at. Like, we don't know that much about Rose's backstory, but we do know that she comes from a planet that, um, I mean, she says it. She says that, like, the First Order came and they forced us to basically strip mine everything uh, for their munitions. And then they used the the ore that we strip mined uh, to, to make bombs that they tested on us. Right? Like, like she, like, they were, they were treated pretty poorly <laughs> by the First Order. And that's why she joined the fight. So she has a very um, specific... It's not even like jaded or cynical, but just like a very, um, I think like like pragmatic, but but also very, um, uh, I don't know, I can't really find the words for it right now, but like a very, um, uh, uh, meaningful uh, reason to fight, as opposed to Finn, who the only reason that he's there is because of Ray. Right. Yeah. Like that's his whole motivation throughout that movie until the end when Phasma calls him scum. And then he says rebel scum. Um, and man, I said, like, this is one of the things that I tweeted when he says rebel scum. I was like, where is that Finn in Rise of Skywalker? Because he, he goes through a whole arc and then it's just like it's like none of it happened in Rise of Skywalker. He's a different character. He's it's just so inconsistent. Um, and it really frustrates me, but uh, a lot about that movie frustrates me. But but only I think because of how good the Last Jedi is, just because it's such a good movie. Um, but uh, yeah, so I watched that. It was fun. I had a good time. Good. I I keep wanting to rewatch that one for sure. It's uh yeah, it's got a different. It I think it has a very different. I think it's the first time that I've fully like like rewatched it. Um, not just in like bits and pieces or whatever, but like done a full sit down and rewatch since Rise of Skywalker, and um, it, it it some of the stuff hits a lot harder now, um, only because there are like <laughs> there are a lot of broken promises. And they, look, Ryan broke the Ryan Johnson. I we're on a first name basis. It's okay. Of course, yeah. He he broke the Kyber crystal in half. At the end of the movie, right? Not right. even at the end, but in the middle of the movie. But then yeah. we see it at the end of the movie, and it's in two pieces. the The lightsaber is in two pieces. the The legacy lightsaber that survived uh, from Revenge of the Sith. It's not the one from Attack of the Clones, by the way. From Revenge of the Sith all the way through until the Last Jedi. It goes through three Jedi, and it's destroyed. But the Kyber crystal is split in two. When we first meet Ray, she uses a staff as her weapon. Right. He like he like went to the store, he very thoughtfully picked out the perfect gift 
he wrapped it and and just handed it to the next person right to, to make like, a star hey, wars movie yeah and instead of taking that and going like yes it's the same crystal it's the same it's the same heart but it is different um instead they she repairs the crystal and yeah. the, she heals the crystal is, is what is the the terminology that they use and then repairs the lightsaber and it all happens off screen and it's never explained in the movie the only thing in the movie that even kind of a little bit explains it is the leather strap around the 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 hilt that that is added other than that like there is no explanation for the fact that she fixed the lightsaber um right. we just we just have to assume it it just like it, it's actually like really frustrating in such a like it just like what a least interesting way to like deal well with and that. and it and it just affirms for me the belief i don't want to use the word belief my the 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 thought process that they started with the end of that movie and worked their way backwards they they and and terio talks about it in the behind the scenes stuff where he says like oh once we once we deci- de- decided to bring palpatine back everything else fell into place and it's like that's a very um uh, uh sort of egocentric way of saying uh we came up with one thing and then we made the whole movie fit around that one idea yeah Right, we 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 brought back a character without any explanation, and then we just had to craft everybody else's narrative around this character who's not important to the story at this point. Anyways, I, we don't need to get into a whole Rise of Skywalker thing again. But, um, <laughs> but Dude. yeah, it's just it was very clear to me that instead of Ray having her own lightsaber that she built that she uses throughout the movie, she repairs Luke's lightsaber because we want the moment where she's got Luke's lightsaber in one hand and Leia's lightsaber in the other hand. And also we have to have a moment where she's got Leia's lightsaber and Ben has Luke's lightsaber. It's like, like that though they wanted those moment moments more than they wanted a story that actually was true to the characters. And it's just, it's one of, it's a, like I said, these are just broken promises. It's like JJ forgot the character that he helped create in the first movie. Yeah. Like these things about it and just let Chris Terrio do whatever he wanted. It's, very very frustrating very upsetting but yeah. we have breaking news it's happened like in the last hour while What's we've happened? been podcasting grant imahara from uh, mythbusters has died oh yeah wow while we've been um, talking wow Sorry. Okay. yeah I'm j- i just jumped on twitter i'm, I'm seeing it too yeah I, I yeah wow wow that's crazy I, he was so young crazy. he's like 49 49 yeah let's see uh imahara died suddenly following a brain aneurysm yeah wow well that's never a good thing no dang i uh, well i mean i was never like a huge mythbusters fan but uh, but you like know who he is right yeah he was oh, yeah. he worked for ilm and 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 lucasfilm for a long time as well so um i think that he was he was pretty uh uh heavily involved with the prequel era stuff so that's uh that's a bummer mm-hmm. Jeez. well yeah. it's the first time i think we've ever been up to date on news on the podcast it's not a good it's not a <laughs> good know. precedent to set amanda Jeez. i know i'm so uh, sorry <laughs> <laughs> let's uh let's take a break for yes. some ads reset and we're gonna come back and talk about hamilton after the after the ads all right uh, Hamilton. It's a musical. It's about Alexander Hamilton, and it's really good. You want to? Oh, just oh no! Call it a night there. My 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 headphone fell out of my ear. I'm sorry. That's okay. Sorry. Uh, I don't think I need to explain to anybody what Hamilton is. I think that everybody knows. Uh, at this point, it's 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 reached uh, cultural saturation. I I I. But uh, it was my first time listening all the way through to a lot of these songs because I specifically avoided Hamilton for a really long time because I wanted to experience it as the story, not as individual songs. Interesting. Um, 
So there was a lot of it that that, and we're Canadians, so it's a new story to us. Yeah, that's uh, true. it's like yeah. it's like I know who Alexander Hamilton is, but I don't. I didn't. I didn't tell you what he did. You knew you knew who Alexander Hamilton was. Yeah, of course. Okay, of course. I, I, he's a he's like yes, part the of the first, the, the, first... the founding of a country that is very important to our culture. I, uh, I yeah, I... he's one of the main players. Like I knew who he was. I didn't know his story. I didn't know who are the founding fathers of Canada. I I, I mean, like John I A. Macdonald is people. one of them. He's our first prime minister. But well, yes, I know the first prime minister, prime minister, but I sure as heck don't know the first treasury secretary of Canada. I don't know. It just seems like a weird. Sorry. It's fine. I'm just jealous of the fact that you knew who. He uh, okay, but but as the story of Hamilton points out, like there's a reason why he has his place in history. Yes, and it's because He's he a big is deal. very responsible for the Constitution becoming a thing. Yes, right. Like yes. like Jefferson wrote the Constitution, but but like it like it needed to get traction for people to care. Yeah. Right, and he was a very big part of that. When they talk about like the what's like the eighty some odd uh, uh, essays that were written, and it's like the, it was between the three guys, and the one guy wrote five, and then another guy wrote fifteen, and then Hamilton wrote the rest of them, yes. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like fifty something uh, uh, essays on on why the Constitution was a good thing. So he's 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 a very important and the, look the. It might sound boring and silly, but but Lin Manuel Miranda does a great job of making it entertaining. The the financial uh, uh, like infrastructure of the United States is a big part of the reason why it is the country that it is, um, and why they've been able to build and accumulate wealth. So, I. Uh, yeah, like he's a very important person in history, no less than than any of the other founding fathers or, uh, I, you know, like the other historical figures from that time that that uh, I have very complicated histories at this point. But uh, I, I just uh, you know uh, current cultural uh, uh, ideologies paint them in a poor light, but. Uh, for obvious reasons they had slaves it's not a good thing um (laughs) but the musical is is super good at making all of this stuff even remotely interesting um i don't know like i i'm not a huge musical fan like i i definitely enjoy a good musical every now and then but it's not it's not something that I would like Broadway musicals are not something that I would consider myself a, a fan of. Um, I got, I got too many other things that I got to keep track of. Uh, like that's a very specific breed of geek. Um, and I definitely hung out with, with musical nerds in high school. So I have a working knowledge of a lot of stuff, but, uh, but most musicals actually drive me nuts. Like I hate rent. I hate it. Like, <laughs> And and yes, there is a there is a large portion of that that is tied to a to an ex girlfriend. But I, but at the same time, even when we were dating, I hated Rent. Um, it just like there's something about it that just rubs me the wrong way, and I just don't. I don't like the music. I, I like the. It's not that I don't like the subject matter, but just sort of like the way that it's treated is not is not. I. Uh, uh, appealing to me i guess um i just i hate i loved i I loved rent so much in um university like it was like my jam and i totally forgot about it like it's like first it's like early university days for me Mm. but it's because i like i got on this kick of like when i got to university being like i should like musicals and that was like the trendiest musical there was i don't know (laughs) yeah um yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I I I'm I'm hard pressed to I couldn't tell you what my favorite musical is. I don't know. Probably Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. If I have to pick one, I don't uh, understand how you got through theater school not having a favorite musical though. I were, well like, because in musicals because I had I had Rutherford for my <laughs> main influence in drama and musicals were not something that we did. Uh, um, yeah, but yeah. what I feel like. Am I thinking of like junior high or something? I feel like all we did was musicals 
for one of my school years. You're, you're definitely thinking of junior high. You're, you're thinking of, of uh, where did you go before? I went to uh, McNichol. Yeah, McNichol. Yeah, you you have to be. Um, I guess so, cause, cause, because 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 we did not do we did comedies. We did we did not do we didn't do th- anything dramatic. She didn't go anywhere near Shakespeare no. um, f- for the main stuff. We did our Shakespeare Fest stuff, but right. that was like that was a different teacher that 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 uh, organized that stuff. It had nothing to do with with Mrs. Rutherford, our the the drama teacher. Uh, I guess yeah, my formative drama experiences in high school are not through Penn High, that's for sure. Now that no. I'm like thinking back onto it or I'm like all the stuff that I did. You guys did Rocky Horror. We did do Rocky Horror, that's true. That's true. We did that, do no, Rocky it's Horror. no I'm not crazy. Yeah, see that's what I was thinking yeah. of. Like your guys you guys got to do a really cool musical and then that's we true. got something not cool <laughs> or something. Um Rocky yeah. Horror is like a good like I would say that that's like a top a top musical choice. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Rocky Horror is a great musical, but, but, um, I, it's not, it's not what I think of when I think of the stuff that we did. Like I, we, yeah, we that's did, fair. we did, uh, uh, faulty towers. Oh, like yeah, we yeah, did a, yeah, 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 a, yeah. a stage <laughs> version of the first, uh, not the first, the whole series of faulty towers. There's only like six episodes of it. Really. I guess I think for me, the, like my thing for musicals is comes from my family taking me like on, on vacations, like as a kid and that we yeah. got, we got to go see musicals. So like, I remember, I think I've talked about it before being able to see Starlit Express as a kid and just being like wowed by these like people riding around on roller skates, pretending to be trains. And like, it was just like the perfect like age for me to love that. And then like, I saw Cats and I saw Phantom of the Opera and just. And, oh, I remember just, no, I remember also just, like, being a theater person in university and then making myself watch, like, a whole bunch of musicals every time I went to New York. And, like, went and watched, I watched Wicked because I really wanted to see it. Oh, man, there's so many good musicals in life. I'm sad that you don't have a favorite musical. I'm sorry. I don't know. I can't believe I didn't know this about you, Mike. I feel like, like, I've been lied to my whole, like, life. (laughs) Your whole life? (laughs) By you. (laughs) Anyways, sorry, um, we can get back on track to No, no, to it, Hamilton. It, 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 this is the podcast, so we, can, we go where the conversation takes us. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, I don't, I don't really have anything, like, insightful or or all that interesting to say about Hamilton, I don't think. It's, it's um, I think everybody knows why it's great. Um, well, but do they, and so this is something that I'm really interested in, because I've seen a lot of stuff that's been, like, come up online, where people are like, oh, well, like, it's, like, diverse casting, like, would anybody really care if they didn't, like, stunt cast this, like, show about, like, the Founding Fathers? But it's, like, as somebody, like, with, like, with the, like, drama background and the theater background, the, like, beauty of what Lin-Manuel Miranda did... And, like, the workshopping process and the fact that, like, so many people that they workshopped us with actually, like, made it into the, like, the, like, original Broadway version. And there's so many, like, little things. Like, like one of the greatest things about it that people are, like, giving it crap for is the, um, uh, like, Philip being, like, played in the second act by the sa- a character for the first act. And, like, the Jefferson yeah. is the same. Like, it's, like, that's, like, classic. Like, that's how you make theater like that's how you make it work is you you find roles and you like duplicate them and you like i and 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 i think that one of the things that they they did so well is that the 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 characters the actors that are playing two roles like Mm -hmm. there are reasons right Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. um i the the one guy is is lawrence in the beginning right and then Mm -hmm. do you say it's philip right the yeah his son right he goes from being his best friend to being his son Mm -hmm. and there's a there like there's a there's a thematic reason why that happens right like it like there are there there's subtext and stuff going on with those choices yeah um and and i think that it's like it's i like lafayette leaves and 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 jefferson comes back from not jefferson is it jefferson Thomas yeah. Jefferson's coming home. Yeah, from from France, right? Like it's yeah. like Lafayette it's goes like the, back to yeah. France, and Jefferson comes comes back from yeah. France. Like yeah. there's there are there are logical reasons why those choices are made between the first act and the second act, right? Yeah, and it it I I, I thought that all of that stuff from like the the directing and and sort of staging. Um, uh, 
point of view. Like I thought that stuff was actually genius. Like I like that. But, that to me is one of the things that I liked the most about it. Have like, you have you read up on the bullet? Like the character, the bullet. No. And it's like it's like this like one of the things that's like a like I'm using air quotey things like a like a like a hidden thing. But one of the one of the background cast like plays like this bullet, and basically she's I think she's one of the first people to die in the in the like play. Yeah. And, and then ever like after that, she sort of becomes this sort of like ominous like like character of death or whatever. But it's there's a there's a moment that I really watched this time like I really saw it where she takes she like becomes a bullet that like, goes right past Hamilton's head and is sort of like this foreshadow and forbearance of like the de- like death to come and it's just like there's a lot of really beautiful things and like that like um I'm not um I'm not throwing away my shot yeah. like the beauty and symbolism of starting off the sh- like I'm not throwing away my shot is that's literally how he dies. Like it's like there's just so many beautiful things about like like the structure and the music and the stage. I don't know if you like a pre like the yeah. the beauty of this this it, it has no sets, right? Like it's this one set that is this bare like wooden structure and the beauty of how they use that rotating stage. Like the moment where he's talking like Hamilton is having a conversation with with um, Angelica, and he he stays talking to her, and she's replaced by Eliza as the like the stage rotates, just showing these like beautiful like I I don't know I just like there's so much of it that like you can just tell that like and this is why I have such a like a respect for for Lin Manuel Miranda. Even though a lot of people are kind of saying like why would you cast yourself in this? I'm like he was a he like ma- he like came up with a story idea because he was a theater nerd and wanted to make something cool and read this like material and worked with these awesome like um I'm very sorry I actually don't know who the um the composer is or and the person that like like because I know because it's obviously not just Lin-Manuel Miranda even though he like has uh done all of the he like is basically the like writer of all of the songs. Yeah. I feel like there's like obviously he like doesn't do it just by himself, but he like but like how you workshop it and how you and like just the like also something I find really interesting about Hamilton is that it's all musical. And I didn't realize that like cuz sometimes in musicals and a lot of times there's like talking parts that are not necessarily part of a song, right? Yeah. And so I just think that it's really interesting that the whole thing takes place so you can like when you're listening to the soundtrack, that was something where I had listened to the soundtrack and been like, I wonder what I'm missing. And then watch that bootlegged version and realized I didn't miss anything that it's all there. But so much of the storytelling is in the visuals, like how you see stuff like the, um, like Angelica song where it's like the rewind, like that rewind moment and the use of that stage, like the, 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 the forethought that went into like the holistic picture of Hamilton and how they, how they, how they built the story as a team. Like, that you know that, like, you can't tell this story with just the songs. It requires the, like, movement. Mm-hmm. It requires the staging. It requires... So, like, it wasn't just... A, yeah. It wasn't just something that was, like, made, and then they're like, okay, I've written this play. Now make it. It's like you created this play with, like, multiple people involved and, like, thought about the structure. Anyways. And I'm using the word play, but, you know. Yeah. Well, and, and that's exactly why I didn't... Um... I didn't. I didn't want to listen to the music without having seen the musical, yeah, right? Yeah. Because yeah. I knew that just listening to the songs that I would be missing so much context, and that yeah. like I wouldn't follow the story. So it would yeah. just kind of that just kind of ruins the music, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, like with 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 musicals, I, it is a it is a holistic experience. You have to get the whole thing, um, and and I'm I'm super grateful that it's on Disney Plus and that it can be enjoyed by the entire world but i it's also something that like it would be so amazing to see it oh yeah to actually see Um, it yeah for sure and obviously like that that cast is is the original cast so we'll never like they're done we'll never get the opportunity to see them do it again Mm -hmm. probably Mm -hmm. but um so it's really cool that it's immortalized that it's captured there and it's and it's accessible to essentially everybody i mean like disney plus is not expensive um and everybody knows somebody with disney plus like anybody can can watch this um 
which is really cool because Broadway musicals are pretty historically elitist and inaccessible to a wide audience. Yeah. Um, it's, I think that's one of the reasons why musicals have such weird niche fandoms around them is because like it is like if you don't have the opportunity you don't have the opportunity right like like it's it, it and then on top of that like it's it's kind it's very similar to opera where it's like if you don't have somebody who was raised to understand opera then they're not going to raise their kid like they're not going to go out of their way to learn about opera most likely generalizing right but Mm -hmm. they're not going to go learn about it and then pass that on to their kids right like it's a it it becomes a bit of a cultural thing um so like for you your parents took you to musicals so it's important to you right yeah yeah so you can go ahead and you can take cara and cassie to musicals because like oh i will oh i'm so excited I, i care to a certain degree but not it, one of the things for me is always the price. It's always right. the price, yeah, side, I mean, right? Yeah. It's like I would rather yeah. spend that money on something else. Um, I just prioritize it differently, right? Um, oh, that's so – and it's such a thing where, like, for me, like, that was my thing going to New York. It's like I know I'm going to spend money and I'm going to spend money on these, like, m- these, like, experiences yeah. of, like, seeing this, it, like, thing. And I remember, like, going specifically to see – there was a um, – I feel like I've talked about it before, but the the woman from um, Christian Chenoweth from Pushing Daisies, who yeah. like originated um, uh, on Broadway with uh, in, in, in Adele and Nazim or whatever was <laughs> what's her name. Adina, Adina Menzel. Menzel. Yeah. Uh, the, like, uh, in, in, <laughs> I like that you don't know her name as well as you know the nonsense that came nonsense. out of yeah. John Travolta's mouth. Um, but, uh, Anyways, Christian Chenoweth originated one of the roles on Wicked, and I just remember being, like, really sad because I had I'd basically gotten to Broadway, like, like a year after they had stopped doing it. It was a different cast, and obviously it was still awesome, but I really, like, wanted to see Christian Chenoweth on Broadway because I know that she's so, like, it's hard for Broadway actors to become, like, known around the world, and I yeah. feel like Christian Chenoweth did that. So I, like, specifically went out of my way to see the play, like, see the musical she was in. And it happened to be a musical with Sean Hayes as well, and it was kind of fun. I think that's how he says his last name. The guy from Will and Grace. Yeah. Um, I've actually now seen Sean Hayes and I also um, Will from Will and Grace was in uh, Glengarry Glen, Glen Ross here in Vancouver. So I've seen both of them now in, in plays. Well, he's um, from Vancouver. Kind of cool. He is. And everybody was really excited because he wanted to be in a play in the Arts Club. So we did Glengarry Glen Ross so that he could be in the play at the Arts Club. I, I mean, I don't know if that was true. I feel like maybe there was just like a partnership of some kind and we just worked <laughs> out that he was in it. But um, but yeah, anyways, but like like plays and, and, and musicals we're always we're just such a core of my like 20s and it's just this thing where now that i like i when i when i moved when i pivoted from theater i pivoted hard at where i sort of like rejected stuff i didn't really go see stuff the last time i went to new york i didn't see anything not for lack of trying i did kind of want to see hades town the musical and now i'm really devastated because i probably won't get to ever again um but i didn't go see it because i was doing film stuff when i went there and like so now for me to come back and be like hey hamilton is really popular I'm going to, like, go into this with all the joy that I had in my, like, theater days. And I just got to, like, enjoy this musical that was, like, the exact kind of theater that I loved, which is, like, popcorn-y and, like, for the masses and all the things that other people hate about theater, but that I love about theater. Is that, like, there's a certain, like, equalizer, I think, with some, with some like, being able to tell a story to an audience that, like, that can, like, resonate in a way that, like, only theater can. So I just really, like, I was really excited about Hamilton for for that reason. And I'm just really stoked that, like, other people are, like, watching musicals. Like, mm-hmm. and that they're watching it, like, they're watching this, like, stage, like, this, like, recording of a musical as it was. It's, like, I don't know. It's, like, only certain people, like, because cause some of the best, too, like, some, like, there's really good, like, British plays that have been immortalized in this way. Right, like they're like I've talked about it before, but much ado about nothing with David Tennant and with Catherine Tate, and like and um, there's actually King Lear with um, Ian Holm as King Lear, but they're all basically like recordings of stage plays essentially. So it's like you, you really only watch it if you want to watch it because you're watching something that like was for the stage. It's not like meant to be on film, but you still get something from it. And so I love that this is maybe opening a gateway for like people to be receptive of the fact that there is like this whole world of like yeah. i don't know benedict cumberbatch is frankenstein and frankenstein's monster like 
like that's been also like recorded and anyways i just think it's really interesting that that people might be like hey there's all these stories that i haven't experienced with people that i recognize and well i i hope that disney takes the opportunity um with this and and sooner rather than later the newsies is on disney plus as well which like i've i actually watched most of it crystal randomly put it on one morning i don't know why she picked it but she put it on one morning and then went back to sleep um and uh, and i ended up watching it basically by myself because her and cassie went back to sleep and Kara was still in bed um and and watched like almost the whole thing um, before I got interrupted, and so I've got like the last fifteen minutes to watch. So I don't know how Newsies ends. I interesting. I assume that everybody gets tuberculosis and dies or something. I don't know. It's the, <laughs> you know, uh, early. It's like the thirties or something. Um, but I, I, it's got um. Oh man, I don't. I can't remember his name, but the, he played Win uh, on Supergirl for oh. for the first few seasons, and he's like he's like the main guy in it. So. Um, like that kind of piqued my interest, and I and I watched it, and it was it it it's the Broadway musical, and I think it's the Broadway cast, or it's most of the Broadway cast, but it was actually like they did it in California, um, right. after the fact, sort of after the Broadway run had ended, um, so they're all a little bit older, I think, than they were when they originally did it, um, but I uh, but it was I it was entertaining, I liked it, and and Disney has. A whole, like it's just like uh, I don't know, like a whole catalog of these musicals of adaptations of stuff of, of things that they own. Like there's uh, obviously there's one for Frozen. Uh, there's uh, there's the Broadway show from uh, Aladdin, um, which actually originated in Disneyland in the Hyperion Theater before it went to Broadway. Um, and I I. Uh, there's like the obviously there's the Lion King which was was a huge Broadway musical for a long time, um, and there's even one for Tarzan that like nobody has seen um, because it, you would have to go to Broadway to see it, and it's just like and Tarzan's not even like a a, a particularly revered um, Disney animated film, so I don't think that anybody cared that there was a musical for it, but it's my favorite Disney movie, so I would love it if they recorded a live performance of Tarzan and put it on Disney plus. Like I would watch that on day one um, just to, to get more of, of that version of Tarzan. So um, they have a whole bunch of stuff that they could, that they could draw from not to mention that there's probably like, I don't know what the deal is with, with them getting Hamilton and putting it out. Like, I don't know if Disney owns Hamilton as a play or as a musical, um, like if it's, if it's their production company that, that owns it or whatever, and that's why it's on Disney plus, but, or if they made a deal with somebody to get it there, but Disney is a very big company and owns a lot of stuff. So I'm sure that aside from the actual Disney, Disney stuff, there's probably a lot more that they have access to that they could give the same treatment that they've given to Hamilton. So, uh, yeah, I think it would be really cool. I think, I think it's something that they should do, um, uh, not just because I would be entertained by it, but I think that culturally, I think it's important. I, I, it's it's like so many things. The internet has democratized. It has it has the ability to take this thing that is a very expensive, very elitist activity and make it accessible to everybody. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, because like Hamilton, I don't tickets were ridiculous. Like if you could even get them. Then you had to pay for them, and the prices were hundreds of dollars, right? And 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 then they do this, and it's like, well, yes, being there in person would definitely be better. Any seat in the house would be better than watching it pre-recorded, right? But at the same time, like, you get to see stuff in the in the Disney Plus version of Hamilton that you wouldn't notice, I don't think. Certainly, like, the nuance of performance and stuff like that. Like, the, those little subtle things that the actors are doing um, that you might not notice sitting in the balcony, right? In the cheap seats. Right. So, 
Um, like I, I think that there, it's, it, it's always going to be one of those things that the second that technology makes something accessible or different, the people, the gatekeepers are going to be like, oh, 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 this is going to destroy Broadway musicals. And it's like, uh, no, there is definitely There's room in the reason. world for both yeah. of these to exist. And in fact, I think what you would find is that opening that up to a wider audience is, is going to make Broadway relevant again, which no, nobody tell Broadway because I, I don't think that they know, but they haven't been relevant since like the early 90s. Right. So yeah. um, like there's been a couple of blips here and there like Wicked, but for the most part, nobody cares. Like if you're if you're a theater geek, you care. If you're not, then, you know, like you probably don't even know that Wicked is a musical. Right. So like I don't think that I've ever heard a, a song from Wicked. Um I would like to see it that musical, but, but it's, yeah. Like, I don't think that, uh, I don't, I don't think that most people encounter this stuff in their day-to-day life unless it becomes a cultural phenomenon like Hamilton did. Right. Um, so there's, there's a, it's a moment to, to seize and, and it'll be really interesting to see if anybody does. Um, cause I'm sure that there are more of the, like you're saying, like there's all these plays and stuff like that, but I'm there, I'm sure there are more Broadway shows that are filmed that are sitting on shelves somewhere waiting to be released in this sort of way. And, and maybe Disney plus will take the opportunity and capitalize on it. And God knows that they're, they're looking for content cause everybody's still, stuck at home and everybody's about to get locked back down by the way uh just, just a heads up like california just uh, uh gavin newsom announced it today that like they're basically going back to march like like it's gonna be essential services and everything else is gonna be shut down so um the rest of the states is not far behind so uh, i yeah everybody's gonna be looking for more stuff to watch pretty soon but yeah I don't know. I it it's getting late. Uh, this is a long episode. You want? <laughs> we'll just say we call it there. Yes, I think that we've talked a lot about the things that we wanted to talk about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> cool. Uh, well, thank you everybody for listening. Uh, man, how do I how do I outro this show? I'm so tired. I j- I just want to go to bed. But uh, uh, you I, can go thunderquack.com. Check out all the other great podcasts on the Thunderquack Podcast Network. You can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thunderquack on Twitter at thunderquack pod and on Instagram at thunderquack podcast. Uh, you can also follow us individually on Twitter. I'm at Aconkin, a K O N K I N. You can add an 86 to that for Instagram. And you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at arkwolf A R K W U L F. Uh, and, uh, if you want to support us, you can do that in three ways. First by going to the podcast service of your choice and leaving a rating or a review uh or you know just do both um uh five star ratings on itunes actually like push us up in the algorithm and people will find the podcast um which which would be really helpful so if if you can take just a minute just leave a five star review uh it would be super awesome the other ways you can support us are by going to store.thunderquack.com to pick up some merchandise like a t-shirt or a mug or a, a comforter for your bed if you are insane no one's ever bought that but but they're there if you want to for some of the items. Um, and last but not least, of course, you can support us at patreon.com slash thunderquack. Uh, your monthly pledge of support gets you access to cool extras, uh, cool bonus rewards like getting the episode early, uh, getting it uh, without ads, or uh, getting the, the complete uncut version, uh, which uh, is an extra 20 minutes this week. But last week was like... 40 minutes so uh yeah it's uh, so much uncut love and action yeah. yeah we talk a lot more about star trek uh in the uncut <laughs> this week so it's true um Actually. cool well that is it for this week's episode and we will see you guys next week awesome stay safe everybody wash your hands and be kind to one another i got it right this time <laughs> good job